Hi there, welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. In this first episode, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with the Mark 1 Ford Fiesta. Let's go and have a look. In this first video, I'm going to be making an automotive trainer for my students to use. It's going to be the engine from a Fiesta. I've already taken that apart, the gearbox taken down, you'll be able to see it in a minute in the film. Uh, most of the mechanical parts I've taken off of it, I'll be building a frame, putting on some wheels so we can roll it around. My students will then be able to take the engine apart, put it back together again, find faults with it, all that sort of thing. So let's go have a look. Okay, so that's the shell, done. I'm not going to use any more of that shell, that's going to the scrap yard. Down here we've got the rear axle. I'll be taking the brakes off of that and using the brakes for a separate jig for just brake jobs. And there we've got the engine, gearbox, front suspension. All of that's going to be separated today so that we've just got the engine left on its own. The gearbox may be used later, but the front suspension will be put on the brake jig so they can sort the brakes out on that as well. Just a quick film here of me taking the gearbox and the engine apart. <laughs> separated we're going to start to build a frame for it to stand on got the metal for it now and we'll make sure that we've got somewhere for the battery to go we're going to put an exhaust underneath it we'll have a key to start it um so yeah let's get on with that 40 by 40 angle iron and some flat bar we've also got some of this we're going to use this to cover anything that moves so the flywheel and the uh, alternator and things like that we'll cover all of that with this so nobody can get their fingers inside of it okay that's the bottom half of the frame done in these corners here I'll be welding the wheels now I've got these wheels for it they are 70 mil and they are 125 mil high here so those I'll be bolting into the corners there underneath so it'll be rollable uh, I'm gonna make a similar top frame to this now what I've done with the bottom one here is just laid them on top of each other. I didn't bother cutting them out or anything like that. But the top one is going to be a bit more visible. So I'm going to take out the little bits of the corners there. So it all fits nice and neatly together. It looks a bit smarter. The bottom one here, I didn't really feel it needed to be that smart. So that's just how it is at the moment. Okay, just a little tip that I've picked up through the years. When you're making a square like this, if you measure there, we're looking at 701 millimetres across there. It's about the same, 701 millimetres, and it looks fairly square. Before you weld it finally, you want to do a, a cross measurement here. So we've got about 1,001 millimetres there. And in this direction, we've got 92 millimetres here, which means that the square is not square. Instead of being square like this, it's actually like that. So we've got a shorter distance between these two points and a longer distance between these two points. So what we need to do now is just slightly adjust it so we bring it back into square. What I'm going to do is tack these two corners and then I'm going to tack the frame to the table so that then I can adjust that back edge. So that keeps this edge nice and straight. And just with a little tap, that should have moved it slightly. It's come to one meter, and that's now at 93. So it's getting there, we just need to do it a little bit harder on this side. It doesn't matter where you measure from, as long as you measure from the same from both sides. So that's come down to 99, 999. 
Mm -hmm. And this has come up to 95. So it's a, a little bit more. The weld on the table there, but hopefully that's just enough. That brought me to 97 there, 979 there. And we're at 999 there, and 997. There. So we're about a mil and a half off, maybe two mil off. And I think that's going to be about right. Right, so the last measurement now, that is at 998 there. And there we're at 996. So we're two mil off. Either I can move this one millimetre that way, or I can be quite happy with one millimetre off. And I think I am at that. Right, so that's the bottom frame and the top frame done. I ground off the edges there just to make it look a bit neater. These ones aren't ground off, and as you can see, there's a little bit of a lip there, and that's where the wheel's gonna sit. Uh, and it will sit like that. Um, now what I can do is put a little piece of metal underneath this corner and bolt it down with three bolts, but I've got some flat bar, so I'll put a bit of flat bar all the way out and we can use all four bolts. So I'm going to put four bits of flat bar in each corner now so that I can bolt the wheels to the bottom frame. Right, I've been a bit busy with this in the last few days. So I've now got the frame made, got the wheels on. And I've started to put the engine mount on this side. Just took the two bolts that sit there for the gearbox and it's all on rubber mountings on this side. The other side is a bit more difficult because <coughs> the thermostat housing is in the way, just there. I'm just supporting it at the moment in the engine crane. But I've built some some sides here out of the angle iron. And I've gone down to this side with it. So it's all on rubber mount, so it, when it does start, it doesn't vibrate. The problem I've got at the moment is when I when I let the crane off, this goes all the way over here and this piece touches the thermostat housing. I don't really want it to touch that, so I have to sort something out. Maybe I take another piece down to here, but I'll see with that at the moment. Okay, so I did put an extra beam on there, which makes it perfect now with the thermostat housing. I've now put the radiator in place. That's just bolted onto the side there, ready to go on. Obviously, I'm going to have to do something about the pipes there. The top pipe there has gone to the thermostat there, which is now lower, so I have to have a bit of a, a longer pipe there. Uh, I did have one other problem, and that was the starter motor and the positioning of the starter motor. I suddenly realized that that doesn't actually bolt to the engine, it bolts to the gearbox. So I wasn't quite sure how I'm gonna fit the starter motor to the engine. And then I suddenly realised I've got the gearbox, and I don't need the gearbox anymore, so I uh, chopped a bit of the gearbox off, bolted it to it, and now the starter motor is in place. And that's what the gearbox looks like now, with a big chunk missing out of it. But hey, it works. I've got some other parts for it now, so I've got a fuel tank ready to fit to it. I've also got an <coughs> a new ignition lock to fit to it and a kill switch for the battery. So they're gonna be fitted to it somewhere. Just have to find a bit of space for them. All right, a quick update. I've got the cooling hoses on, fuel tanks there, I've made a little platform for it to stand on. Got the ignition key fitted, the exhaust I've put on, put the little kill switch on the side there for the battery. The exhaust, I just took the downpipe, cut it wherever it was straight, and I cut the back box as close to the joint as I could, and I just hung it there. I need to get a strap to hold it up so it doesn't fall off. But other than that, oh, the coil I've put on as well at the back there. So that's done. So other than that, it's pretty much done. The radiator's in place there as well. Um, the only thing I need to do now is put the guards around anything that rotates, and I need to get the 
bottle uh, hung up. Other than that, it's pretty much done. I found a slight problem now, and that is that the engine doesn't actually go around. It's been stood a very, very long time, so it's probably rusted up. Um, I've sprayed oil into each one of the cylinders. These two, the oil's gone through them, so they're pretty okay. These two, uh, nothing's happened there yet. So more oil in there, leave them for a while, keep trying to turn it around, and hopefully it'll free off very shortly. Just a quick update. I've managed to free the engine off. It took me three days to do it, but the engine's now freed off. It's not pretty, but... It actually turns over. Okay, so that's that done. The only thing that's missing now is a rotor arm. They are pretty much impossible to get hold of here in Sweden. So I've to order one from England. It's on its way. As soon as that's done, I'll be able to start the engine. In the meantime, it'll have a little bit of paint on it. But other than that, it's done. It's ready for my students to start using. If you've enjoyed what I've done, then stay tuned for part two. I'll be using the rest of the parts I've taken off. In the meantime, subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.